Welcome to this lesson about sketching in SolidWorks 2011. For more lessons about SolidWorks, please visit our website at video-tutorials.net. Now we'll begin by clicking New and choosing Part Document. Let's click on Advanced. This lets us choose from templates and tutorials. Let's click Novice to return to the document selection. We'll select the Part Document and click OK. Currently in the status bar, we see that we're in Part Editing mode. Now if you don't see the status bar, select View from the main menu and scroll down and ensure that status bar is checked. We can create a sketch in a few different ways. On the left here is the Feature Manager design tree. We see three planes available for sketching by default. We've got the front plane, the top plane, and the right plane. Currently all three planes are hidden. I only see them in the graphic area when I highlight them in the tree. To make a plane visible, simply right-click on it in the tree and then click on the glasses icon. That's the show icon. And now the plane remains visible even when we mouse away from it in the tree. Let's click in the graphic area. And let's right-click on the front plane. Select Sketch. In order to create a sketch, it's not necessary for the plane to be visible. Let's hide the plane. And let's right-click on the top plane now. Select Sketch. As you've noticed, the plane's orientation has changed in the graphic area. We're now in what's called the Normal 2 view. Have a look at the status bar at the bottom of the graphic area. You can see that we're in sketch editing mode. We also see another message. Our sketch is underdefined. We're going to be learning more about that in subsequent lessons. Here are the X, Y, and Z coordinates of the cursor in the status bar. And in the Feature Manager design tree, Sketch 1 is currently active. It's highlighted. We can exit the sketch from what's called the confirmation corner up in the right hand. This is OK to accept our changes and the X is to disregard. Let's click Accept. Now since our sketch is empty and there's nothing there, we don't see it in the tree either. At the top of the graphic area are a number of different tabs. We're on the Sketch tab right now. Under the Sketch drop-down menu, I'm going to select 2D Sketch. That's just the regular sketch here. Let's change the orientation to isometric so we can better see what we're going to do. Now let's select the top plane. We're back in sketch editing mode as we can see in the status bar. Sketch 2 is currently active. This time I'm going to exit the sketch by clicking the red X in the confirmation corner. SolidWorks asks me if I want to discard the changes and exit or cancel out. Let's continue. We'll discard the changes and exit. Sketch 2 was empty and now it has disappeared from the Feature Manager tree. Another way to create a sketch is from the Features tab. Currently only two features are available, the rest are grayed out. We've got the Extruded Boss Base and the Revolved Boss Base. The reason that only these two features are available is because they are sketch-based features. In other words, to create this feature you need to start with some kind of profile. Let's activate the Extruded Boss Base tool and the Property Manager for this feature opens on the left-hand pane. Let's take an isometric view. Let's select the top plane and let's activate the Line tool now to begin our sketch. Under the Line tool we've got two sub-options, Line and Center Line. Let's select the Line tool. On the left pane the Line Property Manager opens. By the way, to go back to the Feature Manager design tree, we would select this tab here. Now when I move my cursor into the graphic area, you see that the cursor now appears as a pencil. Let me left click to place the first point in my line. And now let's move the mouse a bit. I've got what's called a rubber band effect. The number next to the cursor indicates the length of the line. And this real-time feedback helps us approximate the length of whatever you're drawing. Currently you can see that my line is about 30 millimeters. Now let me position my next point in an approximately horizontal position from the first point, and now a vertical position. Notice that 90 degrees displays as the angle. Note the line inside the yellow box. This is the vertical relation symbol. In this position, the angle is 135 degrees from the horizontal axis. Let's left click to place a point. And here's our first line. The line tool remains active. Let's left click again to place another line in this chain. To end the chain, we can double click or we can right click and select End Chain. 
The line tool does remain active even if you right click and select end chain. Let's create another line now just with a new starting point. Notice the feedback near the cursor as I move my mouse. Right now there's a vertical relation suggested. Let's click here. And now when I mouse over this point, I see the coincident relation symbol. This symbol is new from SOLIDWORKS 2011. Now we've got a few different flavors of this symbol. A coincident relation symbol at an endpoint looks like this. Here's a coincident symbol along a line. Let's wake up the midpoint. And now here's the coincident point at a midpoint. Let's create a couple more lines. Right click and select. We did exit the line tool this time, but we are still in sketch editing mode. Let's select a different tool now, for example, a rectangle. And I'll place the first point of my rectangle about here, second point there. This is how to create what's known as a corner rectangle in SOLIDWORKS. Next, let's create a three point rectangle. Let's place the first point, the second point, and the third point determines the width. Again, right click and select to close the tool. Let's exit the sketch at this point. We'll go to the confirmation corner and click accept. A reminder that we started this sketch from the features tab using the extruded boss base tool. Upon exiting our sketch, the boss extrude property manager now opens. Since we created more than one contour, SOLIDWORKS now prompts us to choose a contour. Let's select this rectangle. Currently, the extrusion depth is 10 millimeters. We can change that, of course, if we want to. Let's click Accept in the Property Manager. And here is our extruded boss feature. Click in the graphic area to deselect everything. Since Sketch 3 is now consumed, it becomes invisible. As you can see, it's grayed out in the tree. To make it visible, just right click and select Show. Or if you want to edit the sketch, right click on the sketch and select Edit Sketch. And from here, we can change our geometry. And let's accept our changes or disregard them if you want to. I'll accept them in this case. And now let's hide the sketch. Right click on Sketch 3 and select Hide. Let's create one more sketch now. I'm going to use this face. We'll right click on the face. The pop-up menu gives us an option to create a new sketch or to edit the current sketch. Let's click New Sketch. And now let's quickly drop a rectangle here. Activate the Rectangle tool. And my second point here, let's exit the sketch. Notice the Rectangle tool remains active. We don't need to exit a tool to exit the sketch. Let's return to the Features tab. And as you can see, I've got many more tools active. Sketch 4 is currently pre-selected in the Feature Manager design tree. Let's activate the Extruded Cut command. SOLIDWORKS automatically recognizes the cut direction. Let's enter a value of 5 millimeters. Tab key to register. And let's click the green check mark to accept. This concludes our lesson about creating your first sketch in SOLIDWORKS 2011.